we're in the middle of something called the bomb cyclone weather event. Not clear you come up with that name or what it means, but here we are. It sent temperatures plunging all over this country. The severe cold has prompted assertions that it is the product of global warming. Tonight, more than 200 million Americans dealing with an Arctic blast. Winter weather alerts from the Rockies to New England, even into the deep south. Well, it doesn't look or feel at all like January around me. Great. There's a lot of lawns you can see out there not covered up by the snow. Currently, we are below our average snowfall by more than two feet, which makes sledding and skiing a little difficult. The climate in the Arctic affects the climate outside of the Arctic. The Arctic is warming at twice the rate of the temperate areas of our planet. When I started my career in the Arctic in 1981, 85% of the Arctic Basin was covered with multi-year sea ice, which is this stuff that survives the summer and grows the next year and is very thick and hard. Well, now only about 12% of it is multi-year sea ice. The thick multi-year sea ice has now transitioned to thinner first-year ice. So it's gone from like 10 feet to two or three feet and is much more mobile. The sea ice dynamics in themselves have impacts that go far beyond just the ocean, so to say, where the sea ice is. There are signs of a connection between the Arctic and the rest of the world. Those connections, teleconnections, as they are sometimes called, should be uh, studied further. There's what we would call an emerging signal, an association between the loss of sea ice and the warming of the Arctic and the frequency of severe weather events, especially during the winter season in mid-latitudes, in particular uh, eastern North America and eastern Asia. You have this big heating in, in, in the uh, Arctic area and that causes the polar vortex, which is a, a, a byproduct of the high pressure pattern over top of the pole, it's causing that to break down because you've got a lot more heat coming from the ocean up into the atmosphere. That essentially changes like the jet stream. It causes the jet stream to kind of do dips farther down. The polar vortex is the jet stream. Whenever you see big storms coming or heat waves, if you look at the jet stream, you'll see these big dips. What happens basically with the polar vortex is you get a lot more lobed structure to it and those lobes penetrate down far over top of the uh, planet towards more temperate latitudes. If you're on the outside of one of those lobes, there's a tendency to draw up warm air much further into the Arctic than you would have otherwise. And if you're on one of the cold sides, you'll draw down cold air down into that lobe on the other side. And so you get more extreme heat waves, more extreme storms, um, more extreme cold. And so people in you know, the southern states, for instance, will go, well, man, it's, I'm in southern Florida and it's like freezing cold here in February. It's supposed to be warmer than this. This was the first freeze that Orlando has had in nearly four years. Well, you're sitting underneath that lobe that is drawing that cold air down from the planet. Some people will be sitting up in Alaska at the same time and say, wow, it's way warmer up here than it used to be. And it's because that warm air is penetrating much further north. It is too warm in rural Alaska. In the state's southwestern region, high temperatures of 10 to 20 degrees above average are affecting everything from recreation to survival. So there's lots of evidence that the loss of ice north of western Russia blocks the jet stream and allows colder air to reach into eastern Asia. A similar thing happens in the eastern United States in the sense that the, the sea ice loss north of Alaska has, is, is, is fairly pronounced, especially in the, the summer and autumn. That tends to build up this, this upper air ridge in the early part of the winter, even in the midwinter, and that in turn leads to a downstream, constant downstream impact, which is the northwest to southeast flow that, that reaches the Midwest and the eastern, eastern third of the U.S. And look at the map, the wind chills could be at their worst just as the new year arrives. 11 in Dallas, minus 5 in Times Square. Kicking us off tonight, ABC's Eva Pilgrim with America on Ice. Record cold temperatures sweeping the country tonight, bringing a freezing in to 2017. Yep, it's cold. For sure. It's very cold. Wind chill alert to this hour from Colorado to Maine. Fresh on the heels of a frigid Christmas week for the east.